Hey y'all, it's Wendy from Village Garden Crafts. The goal of my channel is to show you how to be inspired by the things that you love. And for me, it's usually all things Disney. Last week, we did a video called the shaving cream technique, and I gave y'all a little homework. So if you didn't get a chance to check out that video, I'll link it in the description below so that you can. We created some of these beautiful backgrounds. And while they can be utilized in lots of different ways, there was something very special that I was working on behind the scenes. And that was a faux stained glass technique card. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So grab those backgrounds and let's get crafting. On a recent trip to Epcot, I was visiting the World Showcase in England and I spotted these beautiful examples of stained glass throughout. But when I got to Germany, ugh, that window is just breathtaking and i decided i wanted to create my own stained glass technique in a card but it wasn't quite what i was looking for and then i happened to be browsing at tuesday morning and spotted these stock pots and my inspiration was born And this is just one of the beautiful Christmas cards that I designed utilizing the faux stained glass technique that I'm gonna show you how to make today. So here's some of my many backgrounds that I created and I have decided to go ahead and sort them into piles and I'm doing that by type of paper. On the left side, you can see that I am sorting that glossy photo paper and then all of the other cardstock into a separate pile. If you recall in that very first video, I told you that when I was creating the green backgrounds, I had something special in mind. And it was utilizing the Sizzix Tim Holtz uh, Christmas trees called Woodlands. So I die cut one of those beautiful trees out in just white cardstock. And I'm gonna hold that across different sections of my glossy photo paper to get the look that I was going for. Once I figured out where I wanted to make my die cut, I went ahead and ran it through uh, my Platinum 6 die cutting machine. And I want to keep the pieces intact. So I go ahead and just use some low tack mint tape on the back of my photo paper and that holds all the pieces in place. I go ahead and I run that die through a couple more times utilizing white cardstock. And then I'm going to adhere that down to a card front with some multimedia matte glue. You can utilize whatever glue and whatever method works for you. I'm trying a couple of different things here. This one, I'm using a sponge to dab it onto the back. Ultimately, I still prefer using my Barely Art glue and I still prefer just little dots and uh, that's what works for me, but you do whatever works for you. If you find this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, please give me some pixie dust by giving me a thumbs up, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. Essentially, I'm using a die cut inlay technique where I'm taking the center part of the glossy photo paper that's green and inlaying that into my white Christmas tree. I've chosen to use glue, but you could essentially go ahead and die cut this out utilizing double sided adhesive. That would make it much easier. I find that it just doesn't work for me very well. But once again, do whatever makes you feel comfortable.
the tree that I chose really doesn't have too many inlaid pieces to be done, so I didn't find it very cumbersome to go ahead and just put in the pieces just like a jigsaw puzzle, one at a time and glue them down. As I was nearing the end of those inlaid pieces, I could see just how beautiful this was going to be. And it was exactly the look that I was going for, much like those pots that I spotted. Once all the pieces were inlaid, I set aside the outline of that tree for another use. I'm not wasting any of this beautiful paper. With one of the other white Christmas trees, I go ahead and glue that over top of the original white Christmas tree. I need to create a well for my glossy accents to sit so that I get that stained glass look I'm looking for. With the last Christmas tree, I go ahead and I ink up the face of that tree with clear ink, and then I'm going to emboss that with Ranger's Gold Embossing Powder. And I actually do this process two times to get a super baked, glossy look on that gold. A quick tip for cleaning up embossing powder and glitter, use a Swiffer. It wipes up those things really quickly. On ahead and glued down my embossed panel, and then I'm going to go ahead and use glossy accents. Now, the trick for this is to make sure that you fill the wells all the way to both sides. You want to seal in your glossy paper. Sorry, but my head's going to get in the way as I do this glossy accents. I don't have very good vision, so I do need to lean close in order to be able to see exactly where I'm laying that glossy accents down. everything is sealed up with your glossy accents, you're going to set your project aside. I did leave my projects overnight for drying. I'm using a green card base that is an A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, some double-sided, very narrow tape, and some mink foil. Now, I don't have a laminator, so I'm just going to kind of use a cheating method. I'm going to lay down just a strip of double-sided tape along the left side of my card panel. 
and then release the release paper and just lay my foil over top and pull it off. And voila, I have a lovely gold accent to match my Christmas tree. You don't have to be as exact as I'm being with the foil. You'll just find that I don't like to waste any supply whatsoever. So I do take my time and burnish it down uh, with my bone folder. That way I get a nice, good, clean lift of that foil. In retrospect, I should have placed my Christmas tree more in the center of my card, but since I didn't, I'm going to make do. And I utilize Spellbinder's border dies, and I select one and create one with a swoop, and I just trace the outside so I get that nice same line, and go ahead and cut my Christmas tree out. I apologize because I cannot find some footage, but I did use that same Spellbinders border die and cut a piece of vellum to go underneath the white cardstock to give it a nice edge. A quick trim of my vellum edge and my card is complete. Now, you could add all kinds of gems or pops of color, uh, anything you wanted, but I wanted to leave this simple because I wanted the technique to shine for itself. If you found value or enjoyment from watching my video today, I would really appreciate a big thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithm bring you the videos that you find most enjoyable and most valuable directly to your newsfeed while helping my channel to grow. I am trying to reach a lofty goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, and I would love for you to be a part of the Village Card and Craft community. I have a few other cards that I'm going to share with you at the end, showing you this beautiful stained glass technique. And I just want to remind you that you can find inspiration in the things that you love. If you really take a look, I found inspiration in a pot for my Christmas tree. So there you have it. Proof is in the pudding. Let's check out the rest of these cards. To create this stunning card, I cut out a cover plate in both green and pink and used the exact same method described earlier. I kept the outline image from the pink and used double-sided tape on the back and just sprinkled glitter over to create this beautiful birthday card. And I used the same technique to create this holographic glitter card and the green outline and made a Christmas card out of this. And finally, I used the complete inverse and made green roses with pink leaves and silver embossing powder. I hope you enjoyed my video today. See you real soon.